Hello and all welcome to The Sweet Spot, your go-to golf tipping show brought to you by The Racing Post. We are both in a very good mood today. Steve Palmer found the winner of the Players' Championship last week, including a big price place selection. Two tournaments to look ahead to this week in the shape of the Singapore Classic on the DP World Tour and the Valspar Championship on the PGA Tour. Steve? It happened. We uh, we found Mr. Scheffler. Well, it was not exactly. Uh, we didn't pick him out of the pack, did we? But uh, what a, what a fantastic week! I'm, I'm still smiling from from ear to ear. It was just one of those weeks where things went our way. I think you got every right to still be smiling, aren't you? I've only just stopped chuckling, Jack, about the uh, <laughs> the Wyndham Clark putt, to be honest, which uh, looked for all the tea in China to be going in. Um, yeah, there must have been some sort of rogue mole or frog leaping about in that hole. Uh, to head it out for us. So um, if the mole or frog is watching, then uh, I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart because yeah, I thought that was going in. Everyone thought that was going in. Um, and uh, yeah, when it when it horseshoed out, it was um, it was glorious. But I think we deserved a bit of luck. Jack. I think we deserved oh, absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's let's be frank about this. Yeah. That Sheffler neck injury was not in the script. Yeah. When that developed on Friday, um, you know, I was starting to wonder why the Lord hates me so much. I was having a moment of reflection. You know, what have I done to deserve this? Because, you know, if it's not that long ago that you remember the Patrick Cartley debacle, you know, five shots clear at the halfway stage at Riviera. Mm. Then he got ill on the Friday night. He, he since revealed in media conferences that, that the flu developed on the Friday night. So that's that explains his weekend performance. So I was thinking, blimmin' heck. Now they've got this sudden Scheffler neck injury. And I was thinking, yeah, I, th I thought the Lord despised me. But, um, yeah, fortunately, the result of that was that we got a much more exciting golf tournament, wasn't it? Because, uh, you know, had Scheffler been fully fit for the duration, probably would have won by 50 shots. Um, but it's much more fun when you win by just one. Isn't it? <laughs> it, it was almost nice of Scheffler. It was, it was kind of it enforced his own handicap system where he injured himself. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, so talk me through, Steve. So. Scheffler's getting the physio. He's kind of sat in that sort of camping chair, isn't he? And I think he later revealed that he was very close to withdrawing from the tournament because the pain was kind of so bad yeah. and it really restricted his movement. We were chatting. On, so this was the Friday, wasn't it? We were chatting. And I think you'd had a couple of beers and you were saying, it's fine. Rest easy. He'll wake up the following morning and it's all good. <laughs> were you telling a few porkies? Were you not quite as calm as you were acting on, over, over WhatsApp messages? I was trying to stay calm, but um, you know, virtually all of round two, he was handicapped, and then virtually all of round three. So I mean, he, he was in discomfort for for thirty six holes. If you, you know, he shortened his backswing, mm. he he had to take longer clubs. He lost about twenty yards of driving distance. You know, the stats will, will show you this. He couldn't He said he couldn't maneuver his ball like he usually did because it it hurt too much. He said lining up putts was painful. He said chipping was painful. Um, but thankfully, he woke up on Sunday morning and was feeling a lot better. He was almost back to normal on Sunday. Final round 64 was the result. Bogey free, just pure class. So, yeah, as you say, he had his own handicap system. Despite 36 holes injured, mm. he, he found 80 percent of fairways, Jack. Um, I mean, the, 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 I'm trying to think, Steve, of a, of a better driving performance, particularly under you know, pressure with with massive tournaments on the line. Yeah. I can't think of one. I really can't think of one. It's an incredible effort, this, because he, he said he was slapping it around the golf course because of, of the injury. His approach play, slapping it around, was amazing. He putted solidly again. It's not like the putter got him out of trouble because he couldn't swing. He was the 37th best putter. It was, it was one of those solid weeks that we say he needs uh, to, to win. His course management, just exceptional. Him and Ted Scott, amazing partnership aren't they they work so well together yeah they had a lot of discussions on friday and saturday because obviously their yardages are out they had so much to awesome. to factor in um but his temperament is unrivaled in the modern game and it you know <clears throat> absolutely incredible temperament scotty Scheffler. he's a 27 year old he's at the peak of his powers he's emphatic master's favorite chad Oh, well, I, I just can't stop looking at the, the the statistics surrounding Scotty Scheffler at the moment. In terms of best strokes gained from tee to green, um, this started tracking in 2004. Number one on the list, obviously, Tiger Woods, 2006 season, gained nearly sheet three shots on the field. 2024 Scotty, 2.83. 2023 Scotty, 2.74. And then it's 2007 Tiger Woods, 2.37. Look, it, the comparisons will be made now and between Scotty and, and, and Tiger. Obviously, there is a huge gap between the two at the moment. But since 
Tiger, we must be witnessing one of the one of the best to do it since that point. Absolutely, yeah. It's ball striking figures over the last two or three years definitely equate to Tiger esque figures. Mm. Uh, we've never seen ball striking like it. You can make all these comparisons in standard of play. There's just one thing he needs to improve on, which is winning majors, isn't it? Sure. He's only he's only got one major win, um, but you expect the major wins to to surge now. Um, he's not been around for that long, really. You know, he hasn't been on the scene for that long. So, yeah, I would expect loads of major victories to come over the next few years. I mean, you, you know, Scotty Sheffer for the Masters is looking so, so good, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's, it's very difficult to see him failing well, to contend. What, what price in the is he going to go off, do you think? Well, he's five to one now, isn't he? I mean, I, I find it a very exciting opportunity putting him in um, long term <clears throat> multi-sport um, anti-post Ackers now. Because there's lots going on in this sporting year, isn't there? And, uh, yeah, I, I've been putting Scheffler in with uh, other things, like England to win the European Championship. Okay. I mean, I mean, I, I, I can't... That's going to let you down, Steve. That, <laughs> that's going to end in heartbreak. Come I on. Can't, I can't... I, you know, anyone can manage that side. I know, I know Gareth, Gareth Southgate's got his detractors, isn't he? Um, you know, gets a bit defensive, gets a bit cautious. But surely with the talent we've got at our disposal... Sorry, we're straight into other sports here. You know, England should be emphatic favourites for that. Um, we've got so much attacking quality. Um, and then uh, uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan for the World Championship snooker. I've, I've, yeah, you, you can have the O'Sullivan, Scheffler, England treble, and it's 90 to 1. I just what about Luke that, Littler? Just drop that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted the payout by summer. I thought I'll have a nice summer. <laughs> but you can throw Luke Littler in the, to win the World Championship darts if you can wait till de- January for your payout. But yeah, so many opportunities. I just hope Scheffler doesn't play the Houston Open. I think Scheffler is, is looking so good for the Masters, but there's nothing to be gained from playing the Houston Open. That's next week. That's next mm. week, Jay. His original schedule has Houston Open next week. Um, but I would just love him to just rest up and prepare for Augusta now. I don't see the point. But he's a Texas native. He's one of the nicest blokes in the world. So he's, he's odds on to honour that commitment to his, his Texas fans, I think. Um, so, yeah, I expect him to play next week, but I hope he doesn't. We talk about, you know, him winning more majors. What would you say the par is in terms of career majors for Scotty now? Five, oh, six? Blimey. Was he 27 years of age? Um, fit as a butcher's dog. Um, I mean, that neck injury's gone now. Don't worry about that for the Masters. Um, yeah, I think he can win eight. I think he can win eight. eight? I, think he, really? I think he can win eight majors. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think he could establish himself as the, the best player of his generation in the, in the, in the, in the years to come here. Because um, wow. it, it's, just, it's just purely on temperament. I mean, if you, looked, if you came down from Mars and you looked at the, 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 the swings and you knew a little bit about, you'd learned a bit about golf in Mars and you... <laughs> See, I've got myself in the mud there. Yeah. But his swing is not not pretty, is it? Yeah, no. the, yeah he, he, he does a bit of tap dancing on the tee and the legs are all over the place, but it's just so effective. It's, yeah, the, we're in the results business here, Jack, and mm. the results of his swing are just so consistent. And, um, yeah, and, and, and his temperament is just unbelievably good. I mean, he, he right. just... You know, you, you, what, I don't know what you were doing on Sunday night, but, yeah, we're up and down like the proverbial yo-yo, aren't we? Getting really invested in everything. He just give you know he just has a little slap with uh, Ted Scott after win and then in his media conference afterwards it's like nothing had happened. Well, I, I must admit, Steve, like I think he, what did he hold out on the fourth hole? He, he, he part the yeah. first three, hadn't he? And, yeah. and I must admit, at that point, I thought it's game over. And Schofley and Clark, fair play to them because they battled pretty well on that on that Sunday. And I think it shows the levels. Like, it felt like they were all out. It felt like they were at their absolute peak of their powers. They were making yeah. these sort of clutch. But par parts and and birdie parts and and his Scheffler was sort of you know strutting round stiff neck yeah. oh there's a few more gears to go through just yeah. a quick word on 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 the show for he mm. I mean he's just a, a serial runner up now isn't he on the on the PGA tour this guy just can't <sighs> find a way to win well when he first came onto the tour he was a ruthless closer you know he, he won the tour championship when he was a relative unknown he won the WGC HSBC champions just after that. He looked granite in contention. I used to love back in Shefali in the thick of things. But then yeah, he's been really disappointing in, in under pressure in big events since. He never looked comfortable on Sunday. I mean, there are excuses for him because he, he's working on some swing changes at the moment. Recently started work with uh, a new coach, Chris Como. But, you know, under the gun on Sunday, he was, he was one over par for the final five holes. Uh, it was a pretty meek finish. So, um, yeah, Shefali, yeah, that would have been the biggest win of his career. Um He's been pretty poor in contention lately, for sure. 
We um we we mentioned at the start of the show that lip out from Wyndham Clark on eighteen. Oh. I mean, I. I it, I was kind of looking forward to an early night and we did get one in the end. But as soon as that ball left the putter face, I thought perfect uh, pace, yeah. perfect line. You know, we'll see you in the playoff Wyndham. Yeah. I mean, I, I often get frustrated, particularly the, the DP World Tour Twitter account is the worst of this. They always say, how did that not go in? And it's sort of this four iron that's been rattled at the pin at about sort of the speed of sound. It's, like, well, it's quite obvious how it's not gone in. You know, it's, it's nearly snapped the pin in half. But <laughs> this one, this one was... You know, it was ruthless. And we, yeah. talk, you know, they, you often think of the bad beats in betting, don't you? I mean, this was the opposite. We, we, we did sort of, something was looking down on us there. Well, you're right. A lot of commentators go for the how did that not go in line when it's just so pointless, isn't it? Because it, it, I always say, well, you didn't hit it close enough to the hole. You know, it was the wrong pace. Yeah, there's loads of reasons why I don't get in. But for that one, I mean, even, even that one, if you if you push it all the way, he hit it a bit too hard, didn't he? <laughs> He hit it a fraction too hard. That's why it didn't go in. If it was, you know, there's nothing. But have you seen this? Have you seen the still images of the? I mean, the balls are sort of. You can barely see the ball. It's gone that far into the hole, and then it's found a way yeah. to pop back out. That's why I think there must have been a mole in there who uh, who backed Scotty Scheffler. But uh, yeah, Wyndham Clark. Yeah, he, he was almost crying afterwards when he to be. You know, he, he was crestfallen. I mean, it's very interesting. He went into last week's tournament, world number five. And he's mm. gone off 40 to one. It's, you know, the world number five going off at 40 to one. I think bookmakers will start giving him much, much more respect now. You know, back to back runner up finishes at Bay Hill and Sawgrass. He'd never played well on those tracks before, Jack. So he, he's increasingly impressive, this lad. It's been a rapid rise from serial bottler. Don't like using that word too often, but he used to be terrible in contention. And he, he really worked on the mental side of his game. And he's transformed himself now. He, he's a fully fledged member of the elite. He's a major champion, of course. I think he's got more majors in him, but yeah, it's going to be difficult to win majors now. And it could be the Scheffler era. I mean, yeah, I don't want to get too carried away, but we could be entering the Scheffler era because he looks like the complete package. He looks like, um, you know, an irresistible force. Uh, but Clark, to his credit, two under par for the final three holes. Yeah. It was a great late charge, wasn't it? In comparison to Shefale, who wobbled. Um, yeah, I got a lot of time for for Wyndham Clark, and I got a lot of time for Siwoo Kim. I mean, he he carded oh, it. Siwoo Kim. Well, we had two that men cut. Brilliant, wasn't it? Not often Sundays go that well, is it? You you, you have a, both our men shot sixty four. Siwoo yeah. Kim shot sixty four. Sheffield shot sixty four. You know, he he finished he finished sixth. Um, he loves Sawgrass, so um, yeah, we, we'll probably back him again next year. <laughs> I, it was funny. I was tracking Siwoo's um, round on the on the Bet three six five sort of shot tracker, and I'd seen that he'd eagled sixteen. And then I was obviously so caught up in the in the brilliance of the golf, I'd forgotten that he'd eagled 16. And Sky Sports sort of showed it about seven minutes later. And then mm. so I got to celebrate that eagled twice because I thought he, <laughs> you thought he'd eagled 17. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's um, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to be careful with that. I mean, I, I try and put devices down and just immerse myself in the action. Um, I know a lot of people are device heavy these days, but um, yeah, he's much more enjoyable just to watch the action. Yeah, no, absolutely brilliant. Let's just then um, quickly finish with this stat um, before we move on to this week's tournament. Scotty Scheffler scores so far in 2024. He shot 64 three times, 65 once, 66 seven times, 67 three times, 68 four times, 69 three times, 75 times, 71 once. Steve, how many times has Scotty Scheffler gone 72 or higher in 2024? Zero. Zero times. Yeah. 67.4 yeah. scoring average over a stroke better than second best. I mean, just phenomenal. Absolutely top, phenomenal goal. Top 20 in every event he's played in. Top 10 in all but one. Yeah, yeah. Just absolute filthy serving up now. Isn't it? And, uh, yeah, exciting times for the golf punter. You know, mm, yeah, absolutely. If, if, if he is the new Tiger Woods, as I say, it's a long way to go to become the new Tiger Woods because he's only got one major. But um, if he is, it's great for golf punters because golf punting has been much more difficult since Tiger Woods um, you know, lost his edge. Absolutely. Uh, well, from one great tournament to another, it's the Singapore, Singapore Classic um, at Laguna. National is that the? I'll, I'll that sing. The I'll sing some more for you. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Laguna National. There's loads. There's there's a, there's a few courses there. It's the classic course at Laguna National. Okay, looking forward to it, Steve. Um, I think this event's only been played once before, hasn't it? So a, a relatively new one for punters. Talk us through the track. Yeah, the classic course at Laguna National, Singapore, seven thousand four hundred and twenty yards, par seventy-two, four par fives. 
We've only got two pieces of course form to look at the 2015 World Classic on the Asian Tour and the inaugural Singapore Classic last year. Good all round test, 150 bunkers, heavily tiered greens, but Oki Stridham got to 19 under par last year to win. It's soft, it's receptive, it's scorable. Got a field of 1 3 2 going to post. Hot, humid, oppressive, only gentle breezes throughout. So some of the um, sweatier guys in the field may require a, a change of pants at the turn uh, each day. <laughs> Hopefully we won't be uh, needing a change of pants uh, with our selection, Steve. Uh, let's go through the top of the market. A few big players flown into this one. Um, Shane Lowry, your favourite, around about 9-1 to one at time of recording. Matthew Pavon, 14-1. to one. Rasmus Hoygaard, same price alongside Paul Casey. Tom McKibben who we've seemingly backed every week for the last four years, is 20 to 1. Jordan Smith, 25s. Tristan Lawrence, 25s. Bigger the rest. Steve Palmer, how many selections for the Singapore Classic? Five. Five picks. Who's the number one? I found that intro very amusing. The number one is Tom McKibben, 20 to 1. <laughs> I didn't even know. <laughs> no, I, I, I know you said the other night that you've been having um, dreams about him. I mean, you have nightmares about Tom McKibben. Uh, you've been seeing him in your sleep um, because we've been backing him so much this season. But we must keep the faith, Jack. We must keep the faith. Tom McKibben will be in your dreams again on Sunday night um, because he would have won the Singapore Classic and you'll be a having a happy dream about it. Uh, <laughs> he's, been, he's been so consistent this season. Form figures of 25, 14, 16, 4, 12, 9. Swinging superbly driving like a king, looking like one of the best young players in the world. I've already said I think he's a certainty to get a PJ Tour card through the race to Dubai rankings this season. We, winning in Singapore will obviously help that course. This course sets up great for him, Jack. The four par fives are at his mercy. He had a hugely encouraging debut there last year. His confidence level was nowhere near as it is now coming into this tournament 12 months ago. His 2023 form figures before the Singapore Classic were miscut, miscut 36. He was 308th in the world rankings, hugely inexperienced, but he finished 12th at Laguna National. Fell in love with the course, open with a 64. Now he returns as a DP World Tour champion. He won the European Open last summer. He's 177 places better in the world rankings. He's the most likely title contender for me. It'll be fully switched on for 72 holes, Jack. And I don't think you can say that with confidence about all of the market principles. Tom McKibben, uh, we're going again. I like the sound of it, Steve. Uh, number one selection for the Singapore Classic. Who's up next? Sebastian Soderberg, 35 to 1, who spends much of his year living in Thailand. Black Mountain oh, is his yeah, Black Mountain is his practice base. So very comfortable competing in Asia. He's played a lot of good golf over the last eight months. Soderbergh finished 10th in the Barracuda Championship on the PJ Tour last summer, 5th in the Dunhill Links in October, 6th in the Ned Bank Challenge in November, 3rd in the Mauritius Open in December. Form figures this year of 23, 41, 9, 6, 55. He looked jaded in Qatar last time out. That was his fifth consecutive week of competition. He's freshened up with a month off. I'm expecting him to return in, in spunky fashion in Singapore, Jack. He, he, he missed the cut by a shot in this tournament last year, but he finished last in his event prior to that, the Dubai Desert Classic. He missed the cut by eight shots. He was in a spell of four missed cuts in a row uh, around this tournament last year. Uh, this time, confident. Second DP World Tour title, well within his compass. Sebastian, so I'm, I'm just curious. How do you remember all of this information and, and, and spit it out in such sort of quick fashion? I mean, there, there was so much information in that sort of monologue then. I work very hard, Jack. I work very <laughs> no, hard. On how do you present your data? Is it handwritten? Is it? I just have my notes here. And um, yeah, I'm like, 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 I, 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 like I go into Prime Minister's Question Time. I'm probably a bit too old to become a Prime Minister now. But I can imagine going into Prime Minister's Question Time. You have some notes down. They go, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I would back you as Prime Minister. I think it would be a, sure. a greater country for it. Well, Clement Freud. Do you remember him? He was a politician. No. He, 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 Sir Clement Freud, he, he told me to go into politics. Did he, he? Yeah, he did. He did. He said he, he was encouraging me to do it just um, just before he um, he passed away. He, uh, uh, he said I, I could appeal to the um, the rich and the poor or something. I can't, <laughs> I can't remember what he was getting at, but he, he said I'd have mass appeal. Um, wow. But I mean, I've, I don't know what I, I have. Too, I, I, too far gone or still a dream? Well, I mean, when you look at the American presidential race, you sort of think you've still got chances when you're about 150, haven't you? I mean, 
I'm only how old am I? 45, nearly 46. So, yeah, I suppose you've still got longevity in the politics game until until you're dead, basically. Oh, we'll get the double up this week and then you can do what you want. Go for prime minister. Yeah, OK. OK. Two down, three to go. Who's next? Richard Mansell, 30 to one who, like McKibben, has started this year swinging with supreme confidence. Mansell bases himself in Dubai now, so he, he got his game in great order in the, in the, in the early year Dubai sunshine. Um, you know, not so easy when you, yeah, you used to be based in the Midlands. So you start the year in the Midlands and it's pissing down with rain every day. Um, it's hard to get grooved in, but Mansell straight, you know, pardon the pun, Mansell out of the... <laughs> good, good. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't even need to say it, did I? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he started the year like a like a Ferrari. Form figures this year are 14, 25, 9, 9. He also played well in Austria just before Christmas. Super consistent ball striker. Should make his DP World Tour breakthrough soon. Singapore looks like a great opportunity. He finished sixth in this event last year. I see no reason why he shouldn't be a leading contender again. Not sure Nigel Mansell ever drove for Ferrari, did he? I might have blundered there. Um, again, of a slightly, I suspect producer Callum, he's a big F1 fan. I, oh, is I, he? I did like F1 for a little while, sort of when Sebastian Vettel was good, and I just sort of switched off to it. Well, I went the other way. Everyone seemed to not like F1 and then watch that drive to survive. Now they're all super fans. And that uh-huh. came out and I went the other way. No, I was a super fan when Nigel Mansell and you know Nelson Piquet and Alain mm. Prost were doing it. I think yeah, Nigel Mansell was in a Williams when he he was, was in, he? he worked for William. Ferrari Hill. sounds with, better when when you than Williams though, doesn't it? When I'm you're pretty sure he was a Williams man, but we, we, yeah, let us know on the comments section. Schumacher was the uh, Ferrari man, wasn't he? But yeah, we digress. We're cramming a lot of different sports into this one. We are. It? Yeah, we're doing well. Get your bingo card out. I wonder what. You uh, see the Cabani what... at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's branch out. Uh, three down, two to go. Uh, Mansell, the last. Who's next? Alejandro Del Rey. Alejandro Del Rey. 40 to 1 now, who finished third in this event last year. The course sets up really well for powerhouses like him. Soft, receptive, spongy paspalum grass. Four par fives to devour. He was excellent in South Africa just before Christmas. He's played some decent golf this year. He was on a wholly unsuitable track in Kenya last time out. I'm expecting much better things from Alessandro Del Rey in Singapore. He won on the Alps Tour in 2020. He won on the Challenge Tour in 2022. I think that career progression can continue with a DP World Tour breakthrough soon. This seems a golden opportunity. I'm going to quickly go back to F1, Steve, and I'm going to give you a quick quiz because producer Callum has has, has messaged me. Oh, my gosh. the, the 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 teams do you call them teams F on teams that um that Mansell drove for there were one ah. four four different ones Williams was one of them who were the other three oh blimmin it Benetton is that even no. a team um Brabham Brabham <laughs> is that a team you're really testing me in aren't you um, Ferrari, Ferrari was another oh it was Ferrari oh well, there you, you go Ferrari. then we're all right then we're all right um oh, I don't so know whether was... I can name any more teams yeah, what one's one's kind of related with Norwich? Rule Fox <laughs> <laughs> didn't drive for Rule Fox. Lotus and um, McLaren. Oh, McLaren! Sure, I saw I've besmirched McLaren there. Now they're big yeah. players, aren't they? Okay, well that's good knowledge. I'm sure that's really going to help people about the winner of the Singapore Classic. Thank you, Callum. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next, Steve, for the Singapore Classic. The final selection is a hundred to one. It's David Ravetto. Oh, uh, Rivetto. <laughs> I will Brilliant. sing our Rivetto song if he wins on Sunday. You, we were very close to buying a lifetime supply of Cornettos, if you remember rightly. He nearly won oh, the STC. He nearly won the STC championship. He finished third in that. Didn't do a lot wrong. He won the Dimension Data Pro Am on the Challenge Tour a month ago. This is a sweet swinging Frenchman, growing in self belief. I can easily forgive the miscut and the Johnson workwear last time out. Rivetto's a long driver and he's an attacking player. Glendower. Far from ideal for him. He was only a couple of shots shy from making the cut there, despite carding a nine at the 17th hole in round one. Laguna Nationals Classic course, much more his cup of tea. Rivetto played in last year's Singapore Classic when he was ranked 586th in the world. And he finished 23rd. He carded four under par rounds. This time he'll start the event 292 places better in the world rankings. It could be licky licky fun time for us on Sunday, Jack. Um, as the ice creams uh, come into play, um, so yeah, I'll sing the song. I've, I've added a, I've added a chorus to that song now. So we'll, have we'll, you? 
we'll, we'll do that when he wins on Sunday. Yeah. Well, can we get it even if he places? Or if yes. He ha- if he has yeah, to yeah, win? yeah. If, if, if he places and we and we have the winner, yeah, it, it's got to be done with enthusiasm, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. I must say, when you said a hundred to one. I was expecting you to name someone that I'd never heard of. Rivetto. I thought he'd be a bit shorter than that. Well, there you go. There you go. No, no, no. He, he's, he's settled nicely on the DP World Tour now, hasn't he? Uh, and I, I think this track is right up his street. Mm, there we go. How many picks have we had for this, Steve? I've, I've That's our five done. That's our five That's done. That's five, yeah. is it? Yeah. And if you'd like to discuss the, uh, the, the two sort of market leaders, I'm, I'm happy to do so. I would love to discuss the two market leaders. Um, Shane Lowry. I mean, this is a man who he's nine to one favourite at time of recording. He's been in good form. What, what's putting you off, um, off Shane? He's been in jolly good form, but he's played for three consecutive weeks in PGA Tour events, uh, contending, as you say, for a couple of them. Um, I think he must be jaded from his his recent schedule. I think he must. Yeah, he must only be here. Um, I would suggest. Uh, I'm guessing. Um, because he's got a healthy appearance check. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, the Porsche are the new sponsors. This is the Porsche Singapore Classic. So I think that yeah, the Porsche boys have, have, have wanted a good field and um, they've attracted Shane over. But I think motivation must be an issue. Yeah, you know, he's playing in a low grade DP World Tour event. Yeah, you know, what's the motivation for Shane Lowry? And he must be short of mental energy after trekking from Florida. Is there, is there a, a point where you, you've just got enough quality to almost? mitigate the fact that you know motivation isn't high yeah but it's just, as i say it's a hot humid oppressive week we mentioned that the sweatier players might not get on with it i mean yeah with all due respect to shane he might come under the category of one of the sweatier players <laughs> uh, i mean paul, paul casey is um is is much fresher than larry obviously this is the first time he's played in on the DP World Tour since he signed for Live, he signed for yeah. Live in, in in the summer of 2022. So it's, it's, it's a big moment that he's, he's been welcomed back onto the on the DP World Tour here. But he's 46 now. Yeah, he's past his prime. Is is, is Casey? I just couldn't generate enough enthusiasm for the short prices. Um, so yeah, 14 to one Casey, nine to one Larry. Not for me. It's the same. It's nearly the same age as you, Steve, isn't it? You've just described him past his prime. Do you not feel in your prime? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple of others in there that I thought you might have a poke at. Pavon and, and Hoygaard, no, no love there either. Pav- yeah, Pavon's form has tailed off after a spectacular start to the year. Um, Rasmus has not played this course before. Yeah, it's just a minor thing. I mean, I, I, I yeah, I, I expect Rasmus to be in the thick of things for sure. But you mm. can't have them all. You, you, you literally can't have them all. Um, okay. So yeah, I prefer my five. Great stuff. We will recap all of the selections at the end of the show, so you can jot them down. Let's head over to uh, the US for the Valspar Championship. Steve, where are we playing? Talk us through it. It's the Copperhead course, Innisbrook Resort, Palm Harbor, Florida, 7,340 yards, par 71, four par fives, a tough tree-lined layout, hosting for the 23rd time. The event was formerly known as the Tampa Bay Classic, the Chrysler Championship, the Pods Championship, the Transitions Championship, and the Tampa Bay Championship, just in case punters want to go through the form themselves. Um, straight hitting, churning out greens in regulation, the key to success. 15 of the 22 Valspar winners finished inside the top 15 for greens in regulation. We've got 155 players going to post. I won't bore you with the reasons why. A mixture of sunshine and clouds, cool mornings, pleasant afternoons, gentle breezes throughout. Sounds delightful. Let's run through the market leaders. Jean de Chaufle, your favourite, 15 to 2. Sam Burns, who's a back-to-back winner here, 12 to 1. Jordan Spieth, 16s, alongside Justin Thomas, the open winner. Brian Harmon, 20 to 1. Tony Finau, 25s. Bigger the rest. Steve Palmer, how many picks for this one? Three. Okay. Um, three. Who are we going for first? Sepp Stracker. 55 to 1, who got his season going with 16th place in the Players' Championship on Sunday. It's taken Stracker a while to find top gear in 2024. He ended last year with a runner-up check behind Scotty Scheffler in the Hero World Challenge. Fatherhood then became the priority for Sepp. You know, little baby Leo, who we've mentioned a lot on this podcast, became the centre of attention in the, in the Stracker household. Sepp has been inconsistent on the golf course uh, since then. But he was rock solid at Sawgrass last week. Rounds of 68, 70, 70, 70. He was third for greens in regulation. He was bogey free in rounds one and four. He hold nothing. He was the 58th best putter in the field, but he finished 16th in the tournament. If he can just warm that putter a little bit, 
I think he's the man to beat in the Valspar Championship. Stracker loves tackling Florida tracks. You know, get, put him on a tough Florida track and he gets stuck in. He won the 2022 Honda Classic. He was ninth in the 2022 Players' Championship. He was fifth in the 2023 Honda Classic on his title defence. He was third. Go back to 2018, where it all started for him. He was third in the 2018 Corn Ferry Tour Championship in, in Florida um, to get on to the PGA Tour. Yeah, this is a Georgia-based Austrian. He's lived in Georgia for the vast majority of his life. So he just hops over the, the, the southern border of Georgia to get to Florida. And he, he, he relishes Florida events. Stracker finished 46th in his only previous Valspar. That was in 2019, Jack. He was a rookie maiden. He was 365th in the world. So a decent effort. Now he returns as a two-time PGA Tour champion, Ryder Cup winner, world number 26. I always find, Steve, it, it's far more pleasing, is it, to have a player on your side that is, is giving themselves chances. Yes, it might be frustrating if they if they miss said chances, but technically it's so it's so much easier to just tighten up your putting stroke than it is if you're hitting pulls or pushes or whatever. Absolutely. And you're coming to a ball striking test this week, right? Mm. Ball striking much more important than putting this week. I think you made a very good point there. Putting is a very fickle business. You know, mm. you know, one minute you can, one, one round you can be the best part in the world. The next day you, you, you can't, um, you can't do anything. Um, mm. But, 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 but your swing. <laughs> we had one of those again, but, but, didn't we? <laughs> there's every chance I might develop a really serious stutter at some and stage. And I've been laughing at it. Um, and and, and it probably, terrible, yeah, yeah, probably every time you chuckle, it probably cements that stutter a little bit. <laughs> 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 but, 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 I've forgotten what I was going to say. Oh, I bet it was a really good point. I know I've remembered. Ball striking is much harder to find. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. When your swing goes wrong, it can take ages to, to find your swing. But as you say, putting just comes and goes like the can come and go like the like the wind. <laughs> <laughs> and that is famously known for coming and going. Um, okay, <laughs> Sepp Stracker, uh, main pick for the Valspar, fifty-five to one. Who's next? Sungjae Im, twenty-five to one who was sensational on his first start of the year. He broke the PGA Tour record for total birdies in a tournament. He's, he carded 36 birdies in the century, finished fifth. Real shock to Sunjai and his fans. He went quiet after that. He's made no serious impact since. But the last fortnight was, was really encouraging for Sunjai fans. He finished 18th in the Arnold Palmer Invitational, and he was 31st at Sawgrass last week. Four solid rounds. He was fourth in the strokes gained off the tee stats at Sawgrass. Driving is so important in the Valspar. So that bodes really well for a good Valspar. Like Stracker, Im hold nothing at Sawgrass. He was 61st in the putting stats. So it's a similar argument for, for Sungjai. Ball striking is the key to success this week. Stracker and Im are hitting their ball really well. They just need to improve the putting, which is the most fickle aspect of this, this crazy sport. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm all over those two. And Sungjai Im... Loves the Florida swing. He won the Honda Classic, like Stracker, won the Honda Classic in mm. 2020. He was third at Bay Hill in 2020. He was third at Bay Hill in 2019. He was sixth at Sawgrass last year. And the most important piece of Florida form for Sunjay M with regards to this week, he was fourth on his Valspar debut in 2019, 29th in his only subsequent visit. So Stracker and him love this assignment. Yeah, top, top player. I don't think en enough was made of that um, record-breaking birdie fest, I remember. I mean, that's just obscene. Oh, Did you say it was 36? 34, 34 birdies 34. in 72 holes and 20. didn't even win the tournament because he had obviously had a few difficulties elsewhere. But, um, yeah, absolute birdie machine. I mean, Rory McIlroy, we <clears throat> must mention him on this podcast, um, he's been making birdies for fun. He, he, yeah. he made loads of birdies last week, but messing up on, on other holes. So, uh, yeah, he needs to tighten up. But, yeah, soon enjoy him appears to be back guys he appears to be back okay looking forward to seeing Sunjai this week uh one more to go in this one yes nick taylor 35 to 1 nick taylor former world number one amateur nick taylor who is now a four-time pga tour champion he showed incredible courage to win the canadian open last year probably the, the, the best tournament of last year was the canadian open amazing scenes afterwards taylor showed nerves of steel to win that he showed more guts to win the Phoenix Open in February this year. We can no longer afford to underestimate Nicholas Alexander Taylor. Since his Phoenix win, 
He's been decent. 39th at Riviera, 12th at Bay Hill, 26th at Sawgrass. Three good rounds last week. A Saturday 76 was the bad one. But it's interesting. Chipping was the was the thing that stopped him contending last week. He hit his ball all right. He putted superbly. He just messed up around the green. So I'm not going to get my knickers in a twist about that. He won't be getting his knickers in a twist about that. Taylor, massive runner for the Valspar. He was a rookie for his Valspar debut in 2015 and finished 24th. Great effort, showed some early signs of, of liking this course. Hasn't made a huge impact in the Valspar since, but 10th place last year was the clincher for me because he arrived last year having just missed the cut at Bay Hill and Sawgrass, but he carded four solid rounds in the Valspar. And you know, in those 12 months since that, that last Valspar, his, his, his self-belief has absolutely skyrocketed, Jim. Mm, yeah, really, really, really impressive. Um, OK, uh, that's your three. I'm, again, I'm surprised that you've not sort of dipped into to the top of the market. Should we should we discuss why that is? I mean, we yeah. we, we spoke about Chauflé. He's 15 to two. And then you've got Sam Burns, who's, who's won here a couple of times before. What's the reasoning for not going with those guys? Well, I think Shafale will have some scars from Sunday. I mean, if, if mm. you look at Shafale and Clark in the uh, post-round interviews on Sunday, they're both absolutely broken. Um, obviously, Clark's um, gone off to, to have a little rest, but Shafale back in action straight away. Um, these swing changes he's working on with, with Chris Como, they probably need more time to bed in. You know, perhaps he was surprised to be contending last week. Yeah, I was surprised. I hadn't, I hadn't realised, actually, Steve, how significant they were. I mean, they were, I saw some stills of, of him at the top of the swing. I mean, it's a dramatic difference yeah. from and they this take, time last year. Yeah, Absolutely. It takes months, doesn't it? It takes months for swing chase. So I'm going nowhere near Shafale. I hopefully hopefully they'll bed in by the Open Championship because he's the final leg of our Majors Acker. Um, so, yeah, hopefully Shafale can peak for the Open which is still several months away. Um, but uh, his, his Florida record is nothing to write home about. So he's not for me at short odds. I think both favourites this week can be opposed. Sam Burns is more more tempting. Sam Burns, slightly bigger price, just hasn't been finishing tournaments well. He's had these these sudden bursts of, of scorecard destruction. Um, mm. There's been loads of good stuff, but then he's just suddenly gone, gone, gone double bogey, double bogey, boom, boom, boom. You know, often at the end of rounds. Um his Valspar record is obviously magnificent. Two wins. He's a serious danger man, but I couldn't pull the trigger on him. And Justin Thomas, I mean, he's a lot of people will be backing him again this week. But we spoke last week that his confidence levels are not quite where they need to be, are they? I still think there's a vulnerability there. He, he missed the cut at Riviera. He missed the cut at Sawgrass. They're two of his favourite golf courses in the world. Um, so the Thomas comeback is faltering a little bit. Uh, no, no, I think Sepp Strack is the, the, the best bet of the week. You know, when I saw him so deep in the betting, um, really excited. He, he, he has been back, but you know, still 50 to 1 and bigger. I mean, he's really juicy prices. Absolutely. You feeling, you feeling good for this week, Steve? What, what have you got coming up for the, for the rest of this week? There seems to be an energy about you at the moment and a good energy at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do feel good. I do feel good. Yeah, you know, you know, Lady Luck showed some mercy on Sunday. And, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. And I'm going to build on that. Um, no, I, I expect the each way double to oblige. I'm really excited this week. Tom McKibben and Sepp Stracker. Yeah, it's a big price each way double. Um, yeah, I expect I expect that to win, and then I expect to be getting lots of uh, lots of dog treats. Yeah, I've got a dog. The dogs the yeah. dogs coming soon. Are you still think, doing your sort of nighttime reading about how to train them? Yeah, I mean, there's just so many things you need to get. I mean, the, 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 thanks for all the people who put stuff in the yeah, comments. Yeah, I saw section. there were some handy comments. Um, yeah, they a lot were saying consistency. You just need to be consistent with them. Consistency. I mean, one mentioned how expensive the dogs can be. I, I am starting to realise that with all the bits and bobs you have to buy and the insurance and whatnot. Yeah, one commenter was, um, what did he suggest? Rubbing poo in the dog's face. I mean, that was pretty extreme training advice. He said that's the <laughs> that's what you have to do. I mean, I, I I'm not sure I fancy that. I don't, I don't, no, don't. Do I'm that. not sure I fancy no. rubbing poo into anything. To be honest that sounds a it sounds a very messy business um so i'm quite daunted by the task ahead i won't be rubbing any poo in anyone's noses i won't be um yeah i i, I don't know what i'm gonna be doing i'll tell you what jack yeah I, I am in high spirits i am in high spirits but i i am worried because the the, the breeder of the, uh, the 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 dog breeder that we've used very very well respected breeder um didn't just go to any old tom dick and harry and say you know, <laughs> 50p for the Make dog, yeah, dog. We're, we're, we're paying we're paying top dollar for this quality breeder but she she said like she actually used the words you know you've got to do this you've got to do that you know because uh, you know getting a dog can ruin your life <laughs> but she said that yeah 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 it's great great honesty i thought oh, well, that sounds like a sound investment then uh, well if, if that's her sales pitch and they're still selling well i mean these these things must be incredible dogs <laughs> yeah but that's the warning if you don't do things right 
um, they can ruin your life. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit worried that um, yeah, the little, little Coco, as she's, uh, she's, she's now been named, um, anything could happen. It's, it's just before the martyrs. I, I feel really, really dangerous at the moment. I don't want the dog to unsettle me, Jack. Um, mm. So I may just bring it around your house and you can sort it out while I do the masters. Is that all right? Yeah, ru ruin my life instead. Yeah, coll collaborative <laughs> work and all that. Um, we shall run through the eight selections across the two tournaments this week, Steve, starting with the Singapore Classic. Tom McKibben, Sebastian Soderberg, Richard Mansell, Alejandro Del Rey, and David Lavetto. OK, there's your five for the Singapore Classic. Three for the Valspar. Who are they? Sepp Stracker, Sung Jaim, and Nick Taylor. Okay. Um, I must say, Steve, just before we go, I loved your latest column on um on Racing Post on the on the members club section. You were you were saying that you, the dream is to one day open a open a pub. I mean that oh, yes. would be great, wouldn't it? Yes, the effervescent pheasant. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am looking into alternative careers. Um and uh, but yeah, becoming a publican. is always um always yeah, it, it's it's just suddenly become a dream of mine, actually. Yeah. Um, but I think they've got a great. I know it's. I know it's quite a tough trade at the moment, particularly if you're just so, solely a wet pub. But the landlord across the road at my pub, he, he sort of went in the other night and he was saying he, he'd had quite a stressful day. And I said, "Oh, what's gone wrong?" And his big stress of the day was selecting what new lager to put on tap. And I thought that sounds like an absolute joy of a of a yeah. conundrum to try and work out. I thought if well, that's my biggest worry of the day, I, that that's a good lie. <laughs> yeah, and I would insist on having a free house where you can pick exactly what you want. You don't want to get tied down by, a, you don't want to be owned by a brewery because then they tell you you've got to serve your Carlsbergs and yeah. filth, you know, filth like that. But um, <laughs> yeah, I would, I would, I would have a free house and I would get in all the drinks that I like. And um, yeah, it'd be a great place. We'd open all hours um, and uh, we'd have a lot of fun. Yeah, we're gonna have pheasant racing. Um, would, would you would you base it down near you or would you would you sort of you know go further afield yeah i'd have a plot of land in in dorsetshire uh we'd have a massive beer garden for the pheasant racing we're gonna we're gonna cull pheasants that don't um, show enough effervescence um <laughs> and eat them so yeah. um yeah 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 I, I, I yeah i look forward to that but i, I um yeah i'm gonna try and stick with the punting game for as long as possible but yeah yeah the column if you haven't read it was about the pressures that punters are facing at the moment mm -hmm. and um yeah punters are under pressure aren't they jack and um you know uh, hopefully the government sees sense and doesn't uh, doesn't ruin the betting industry and ruin racing and send me off to be a publican uh, that's a very apt place to finish steve but you're on holiday aren't you next week yes sir where are you, are you going anywhere nice or, or, or staying staying in the country no, that's the last week without a dog. So, um, yeah, before the dog ruins my life, I'm going to just have a, have, a, have a peaceful week playing a bit of golf and whatnot. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, happy days. Well, enjoy that. Well, I, I myself um, and uh, I think James Mason will be back next week to preview the Houston Open and the Indian Open. Um, so until then, stay safe. If you're following in on any of Steve's selections, please remember to do so responsibly. And uh, best of luck. See you later, everyone. Bye bye.